Hey, what's happening, family? It's your man, Mark Black. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to come to you briefly today because we got to have a talk about an incident that happened recently, um, happened on the day of the conviction of Derek Chauvin, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware, but there was a young, young girl, a 16-year-old, uh, Makia Bryant, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, who was shot and killed by a police officer in Columbus, Ohio. Now, before I even say anything about the incident, about the case, I want you to understand that all of you who know me know that I don't support the police whatsoever. I don't support law enforcement. I don't support the police. I couldn't give a fuck about a cop. All right. Um, I don't call them. I don't utilize them. Whenever I get a chance to get away from them, I get away from them. I don't have nothing to do with no pigs. All right. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that. Um, the very fact that the pig was there was in any way justifiable. I don't give a fuck about police. I don't, I, I don't recommend we call them. I don't recommend we have anything to do with them. All right. So with that having been said, People have been asking me, what do I think about the incident? Now, the day of the incident, I posted two tweets. Because like many of you, I was outraged. Uh, I'm human. And we all are. And to see a 16, at the first report uh, of the incident, it was reported that she was 15. It subsequently turned out that she was 16 years old which doesn't make a difference. She was still a child, right? Um, at the first reporting of the incident, um, I was outraged. I was livid. Um, and I posted two tweets indicating my willingness to fight these motherfuckers, right? Um, and nothing I say today in this video is going to change how I feel that we ultimately will need to deal with law enforcement in this country as black Americans, regardless of the circumstances in this instance or in any other instance, at some point, we're going to have to face these motherfuckers and make them pay in the currency that America understands. And you can call that whatever you want to call it. <sighs> Subsequently, the body cam video came out. I reviewed the body cam video myself. I don't tend to go in for trauma porn or whatever the case may be, but I had to see for myself how in the hell this occurred, right? I, I just, I just had to know, right? And this goes to a larger thing that I've been trying to communicate to many of us black sheep that even when we don't want to know the truth, even when, even when our, uh, our biases, our anger, our upset, our outrage leads us to think, fuck, I don't even care about the facts. I don't even want to know what actually happened. This is what I feel. We still have a responsibility to pay attention to the evidence, right? Not what we wish happened, not what we want to see happen, not what we hope to see happen, but what actually happens. All right. So I'm going to give you a breakdown because I'm not going to attach to this video uh, the footage. I don't believe in showing it off. I went and looked for, you know, looked at it for myself. I recommend that you do as well, but that's your choice. When the officer pulled up on the scene, all right, and he gets out of his cruiser, the officer was not bearing his sidearm at the time. In many of these instances with law enforcement fam, what we see is the officer getting out of the vehicle already with a will to escalate the circumstance, to escalate the situation, all right? This officer did not do that. This officer got out of the vehicle and approached the scene. Now, let me set up the scene for you, all right? When the officer 
perused the scene. There was about five people behind a vehicle that was in the driveway of the house. So if you were to look over to say the officers left, there's a driveway, a sidewalk, a yard, a house. There's a vehicle in the driveway. There's like three people standing behind two to three people. I couldn't make out the back person really clear. I think there was three people. And then one of which was a male. And then there was a, a female standing in front of the male. So these are all people by the car. It looks like between three to five people by the vehicle in the driveway. There's another vehicle that's parked like from the street going into the driveway. There's what appears to be a female in pink. She's wearing all pink outfit. And the girl that we ultimately understand to be Makia. Okay. The officer walks up on the scene. Suddenly, the male that was there that had the female in front of him pushes the female from the, you know, in front of the vehicle that's in the driveway all the way to the sidewalk. At which point he then kicks this female in the head. All right. At that moment, as this is occurring, so now there's a physical altercation because when he first showed up on the scene, everybody was kind of static. Nobody was really doing anything. But then this altercation kicks off. The moment this altercation kicks off, the officer draws, draws his sidearm, okay? Once he draws his sidearm, Makia had already turned away from the officer to face the, the girl, the female behind her that was in pink and started rushing the female behind her. And Makia had what appears to be some sharp object, a knife or, or some sort of object in her hand, right? The, the video was kind of blurry, but if you zoom in, it looks like it could be a bladed object. She then raises the bladed object towards the female in pink, at which point the officer fired four shots incapacitating Makia, who then falls to the vehicle because she had pressed the girl in pink up against the vehicle, who then assumed a defensive posture against the knife attack that was coming. Makia falls to the ground. Another officer approaches. He stands there briefly, attempts to render her aid, but apparently the wounds from the shots overcame her and she subsequently died. Now, that was the scene. That was the scenario that occurred. Makia was reported to have called the officers because she was being threatened. She was being threatened with attack by multiple individuals, right? Um, according to the 911 call, it appears that she stated that they were armed and they were threatening to put hands on him. All right. So when the officer showed up, all he knows is that somebody might be armed and there may be a physical altercation or multiple physical altercations that are taking place. This is what we know. This is what we see from the video, from the evidence. All right. What do I think about the circumstance? I think it's fucked up. I think it's tragic. I really do. I wish that that young woman was still with us today. I saw a TikTok video of the sister doing her hair. She was a beautiful little sister, right? Long, pretty hair, chubby face, you know. She was beautiful. And now she's gone. And it's a fucking tragedy. The officer did not do anything wrong in this instance. Now you can sit here and try and claim Mark Black is a coon, that I'm a bootlick, that I'm defending the pigs. I know you will. But the fact is, is that if it were me, okay, I'm ex-military, I'm trained with weaponry, I've studied martial arts, I know combat. I used to be in a gang. I know gunfights, knife fights, you name it. 
All right. If I were that officer in that circumstance and everything played out up till the moment of the shots, the exact same way, I'm hard pressed to see how I would have done it any differently. Now, this is not to say that this pig is innocent. He could have been beating niggas around the corner five minutes before he came around the corner and killed me here. I'm not defending the police. I'm saying that in this particular instance, this was a series of bad choices that were made that ultimately caused the death of our little sister. Now, let me address some of the things that we all have brought up, right? Because like I said, I'm human. I, I, I got just as angry, just as pissed off as any of you. Right. So I had a lot of these thoughts go through my head until actually I was able to calm down and analyze the situation. The first thing that was brought up was the fact that he could have used a taser. OK, why didn't he attempt to taser Makia? Let me explain to you who aren't familiar with the actual use of a taser. What that is, a taser is a device that delivers an incapacitating shock or supposed to deliver an incapacitating shock. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about the fact that tasers don't work all the time. If somebody's extremely emotionally distraught or they're under the influence of drugs, they can regularly overcome the effects of a taser. All right. But a taser works in two ways. You have your close up fashion where the taser can be applied to probes to deliver the shock can be delivered directly to the skin of the individual, or the, the clothing of the individual to deliver the shock and thus attempt to incapacitate them. And it also has a series of probes, like two probes that are fired using compressed gas of some sort, like gas cartridge, CO2 cartridge, something like that from the taser that then attach to the person's clothes or their skin and deliver the shock. A taser can be deployed for one individual. I need you to understand this, fam. One person can be tased. Okay, so why not tase Makia? Because when the officer approached the scene and the physical altercation started taking place, it was no longer just one person involved. He drew his sidearm because when you have one physical altercation here, another physical altercation here, plus in the vehicle that's in the driveway, that's up in the driveway near the house, there are other people standing there. You don't know if they're armed or if they're about to get involved in the altercation. One taser will not stop five, six, seven, eight people. When the physical altercation started to take place, the officer drew his sidearm because his sidearm has enough rounds to be able to incapacitate everybody there if need be. Also, when I watched the video, fam, when he drew his sidearm, for any of you who are not trained with firearms, one of the things that we learn as firearms users is trigger discipline. Fire discipline, right? If you're not going to fire a shot, your finger is not inside the trigger well. The trigger well is that little guard that comes down where the trigger is located. The officer pulled his firearm. I slowed the video down so I could see this shit. Even as he drew his sidearm, he did not have his finger on the trigger. He was not looking at that point necessarily to shoot anyone but because the situation was devolving into violence he had to be able to defend whoever he was able to defend incapacitate whoever was needed to be incapacitated because remember there was a report that someone there was armed and maybe multiple people were armed This officer did what he was supposed to. 
But now think about this, fam. If you've got your sidearm in your hand, are you then supposed to pull like a Rambo and pull your taser and be doing this? No. He didn't deploy the taser because it was inappropriate. There was too many people to be able to be assured of properly incapacitating and or stopping anybody who was involved in a physical altercation. This is why he didn't taser Makia. Because there was too much shit popping off for him to be assured that he could taser. He already had his side arm in his hand. He was not going to deploy his taser. I don't know what movies and shit that people be watching. But none of this in real life happens like in movies, fam. Others have said, then why didn't he fire a warning shot? Fam, in nearly every jurisdiction in this country, warning shots will never be fired. Ever. Because what goes up must come down. Every round that's discharged from a firearm, whether you're law enforcement, a citizen, or whatever, the person discharging the firearm is responsible for where that round goes. If I fire a round in the air, bah, just one round. When that round drops from the sky, it has the, cap the capability of injuring somebody, e even killing somebody, depending on the amount of velocity. If that round was to hit a child or hit somebody else, that officer would be liable for where that round hits. A warning shot could injure somebody who's not even a part of the incident. Warning shots don't get fired. Get that shit out of your head. There's no such thing in any law enforcement scenario, any military scenario, or if you find yourself unfortunately in the midst of a scenario where you need to discharge your firearm, where you should be firing a warning shot. It doesn't happen. This is not the movies. This isn't HBO Max. This is real life. Warning shots do not occur. Some of you have conjectured, well, why didn't he shoot her in the leg? I even heard somebody say he could have shot her in the foot. As a military trained marksman, which this individual allegedly is, the officer that, that fired on Makia was ex-military. He was trained as a marksman. Every single marksman in the military, every single soldier, sailor, airman, marine, when they take firearms training, are taught to aim for the center of mass. What does that mean, fam? If you have a human-shaped body, right, a human-shaped target, the center of mass is here. It's the chest area. We're not taught to aim for the head, to try to aim for the leg. Why? Because the risk of missing your shot increases the smaller the target is. Well, he was only eight feet away. Bam. In the heat of the moment, when adrenaline is dumping in your system and your hands are shaking, even with training, your aim could be off. You have a greater chance of hitting your target when you aim at the largest target. So he aims at center of mass. Every person who is trained to utilize a firearm will discharge that firearm while aiming at the center of mass. There was never going to be a scenario where he was gonna shoot her in the leg, where he was gonna shoot her in the foot. If an officer or anybody else for that matter, I'm what I'm saying doesn't just hold for the police, fam. It holds even for me. I'm not an officer. But if I'm in a, a situation where I'm discharging my firearm, I'm aiming for the center of mass. I'm aiming for your chest and or your back. I'm aiming for the largest target so that the likelihood of my rounds hitting that target is increased. These warning shots, these ideas about warning shots and shoot them in the leg and stuff like that, that is bullshit. 
It never happens in real life. It never happens. And it's never going to. These are unrealistic ideas that anybody who discharges a firearm has to be such an ex expert marksman that they can be guaranteed to shoot someone in the leg. Not to mention the fact, fam, that you can die just as easily from being shot in the leg as you can be by being shot in the chest or the torso. Let me explain a little anatomy to you. As your aorta and all of that stuff branches out into larger and larger arteries, as it hits your legs, it goes down both legs and separates into the femoral arteries, which runs along the side of your femur. If you were to get shot in your leg, let's say the bullet hit your femur, broke your femur, and pierced your femoral artery. If your femoral artery is severed, you have about 30 or so seconds to maybe a minute before you are seriously at risk of exsanguination. In other words, bleeding to death. And that's from being shot in the leg. Fam, in my old neighborhood, I watched a dude get stitched up nine times from somebody spraying him with a Uzi. They drove, they drove by. We were standing in front of a, a grocery store. He was on the corner. I was about maybe 25, 30 feet away from him. Cats came through the intersection. Dude leaned out the window with a Uzi. Sprayed dude. Hit his ass nine times. Two times in the leg, like five times in his torso, and twice in his neck. But because he didn't have any arteries severed, the brother survived. The amount of shots once an engagement occurs really don't matter. And I know that sucks to hear it. Why'd he shoot her four times? He could have just shot her once. You are trained to engage a target, to incapacitate it, to ensure that when the engagement is complete, the target is unable to engage back. So at the moment, the officer decided to made that decision to fire his sidearm, which by the way, fam, if you look at the video, the officer waited until the very last second, like the very last point he could before he fired his rounds. Makia was running up against the girl in the pink. The girl in the pink had leaned across the hood of the other vehicle that was up in the driveway and had assumed a defensive posture. She leaned over like this to her left and she raised her elbow and her shoulder up like this. So she assumed a defensive posture. The girl in the pink or the female in the pink did not appear to be armed and she was not a threat to Makia. She was literally not fighting Makia. But Makia turned to her rushed her, pressed her up against the vehicle. Did, so in other words, the girl in pink had no opportunity except she went over the hood of the vehicle to escape with a sharp object, of, which appears to be a knife in her hand, and then raises that sharp object up like this. The officer fired when Makia's arm came up like this, not when he saw the knife. So he waited until the very last instant to fire his weapon, to fire his service weapon. Now, why four rounds? Because Makia was rushing this girl. She had momentum on her side, right? Let's say he had tased her. Let's say for the sake of argument, right? For the sake of, uh, of just analyzing the situation. Let's say he had tased Makia, okay? And let's say that the taser took a fraction of a second to seize Makia up. Well, with Makia having the knife already angled and making the motion towards this girl to stab her, that blade could have still stabbed a girl. So when he fired his, his sidearm, 
He fired four rounds because four rounds was what it took to incapacitate Mejia. After she received those four rounds, she turned around, she fell to the ground on the side of the car that was there parked in the driveway. And she was no longer a threat. Why is any of this important? Why does any of this even matter? That was a 16 year old girl. He still shouldn't have shot her. I know what you're saying. Trust me, I do. Why does any of this matter? Why does any of the video evidence, any of the analysis, any of that matter? She was 16, she was a baby. She should still be alive. I get you. But fam, if we don't want evidence to matter in this case, then why do we expect evidence to matter in any case? George Floyd's death was recorded on video. And thank goodness it was. Because they would have tried to say that our brother died from an overdose or he died for some other shit. But we saw clearly what Chauvin did. Evidence matters. Video evidence matters. These circumstances, these situations and things like that do matter. My heart says to me that I'm sick and I'm sad at the loss of my little sister. But my mind says to me that this was a tragedy. This was something that should not have happened, but there was no other way for it to play out. The officer gets a report that someone on the scene is armed. He shows up and immediately physical interactions, physical altercations commence. And then as he's engaged in the scene, he sees one person with a weapon. And that one person is in the process of using that weapon against another individual. What fucking choice did you expect him to make? Like, legitimately. Take your feelings out of it. Take the fact that cops kill us every day out of it. Take all of that out of it. Just look at this particular circumstance. What choice do you expect him to have made? Because I can guarantee that many of you, without the training that he has, wouldn't have made nearly as good a decision. You put many of you in the same situation with no training and a firearm, and the shit would have been a lot worse than what it turned out to be. We mourn for Makia, and we should. But regardless of whether she started the shit or not, or was a part of the shit that got started or not, that girl in the pink is alive today. Everybody else that was involved in that circumstance is alive today. That cop took one life. And it was fucked up that that happened. But nobody legitimately who saw the circumstance could say that he didn't potentially save at least one other life. And maybe even more. When he fired his rounds, the male that was kicking the girl in the head stopped. The girl who was being kicked was able to get away. The girl in the pink was able to retreat. You can say what you like, but if I was any of their family members, I would be pissed the fuck off. Regardless of, look, we know people start shit. We know people go and fuck with people. We know that people do ill shit. I have no doubt that people went over there to fuck with Makia to maybe jump her or do some stupid shit. I'm not saying that there is anybody innocent here. 
What I'm saying is that there's nobody innocent here. These murders at the hands of law enforcement are one of the biggest issues that we as black Americans have to face. And we cannot afford to take circumstances that are even borderline and make them our cause celeb. I wish peace and a way through this shit for Makia's family. I'm sorry the girl is dead. This one ain't on the cop. It was a series of bad fucking choices that led to bad fucking ends. And I know she was young and I know she was untrained and I know she didn't know any better. I know all of this. But that doesn't bring her back. In all of our outrage, all of our upset, at what seems to be a senseless fucking loss is not going to bring her back either. That's all I got to say on it, fam. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible fucking tragedy. May our little sister rest. May her family find some degree of peace. May we all find the strength to do what we need to do to stop these incidents from having such a traumatic effect that we can't even look at the facts, that we we can't even face the reality of them. Because we're gonna to need to have our heads on a swivel. We're gonna to need to have our ducks in a row. We're, need, we're gonna to need to have our brains working 24 seven to be able to break down and analyze and understand the circumstances and the laws and the rules so that we're able to defend and protect ourselves from this shit. So mourn, I did. I cried like a baby when this shit happened. It's all right, fam. But use your noodle. This ain't this ain't the fight we need to be making, right? I'm not gonna be one of these goddamn lousy conservative bastards that talk about crime in the black community. Should there have been an attack on that girl by other black people? No, and we need to address that type of shit. This propensity towards violence, beatings, you know, jumpings and shit like that whenever we have an issue with other black folk. But that's stuff that can be handled in-house. I hope that maybe when you investigate this for yourself, you'll find, you'll find your way through this like I have. So fam, thank you for listening. If you don't like what I said, fuck you. I'm not here to kiss your ass or cater to your feelings. I'm not even here to cater to mine. Because like I said, I'm just as human as you. I'm just as pissed off as you. I'm just as fucked up behind it as you. The only difference is, is that I don't believe my feelings. I believe facts and evidence. And I'm sorry, but in this particular instance, while it was tragic, this one ain't on the cop. It was a series of fucked up choices that led to the death of our little sister. And that's it. So fam, until next time, as always, I wish you all love, peace, prosperity, and power, real power to our people.